Please stand for the Angelus. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail, Holy Mother, who gave birth to the King, who rules heaven and earth forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. On this, the last day in the octave of Christmas, and on the first day of the new year, we venerate the Virgin Mary under her most important title, the Mother of God. In doing so, we celebrate what God has done in choosing Mary as his mother, and thereby bestowing upon her all manner of gifts and graces. We marvel at the fact that God took into account every detail all the details and circumstances surrounding his birth, placing it at a certain time and place in human history, during the reign of Caesar Augustus, a specific set of circumstances, a census being taken, and among a certain people, Palestinian Jews. But above all these details, God foresaw the mother who would bring him into the world the one whom he predestined from all eternity, whom he created with the utmost care and loving attention, so that one day she would make a free choice to be his mother. And calling Mary the mother of God, we especially acknowledge one fact of human life, that a mother is not just the source of one's flesh. She is not just the mother of the body of her children. She is the mother of that person. Being a mother is not just something biological, but something that is sacred, holy, and part of the divine order of God's creation. During the Christmas season, when we look upon Mary, the mother of God, we usually see her with the Christ child in her arms as she offers her son to us, Jesus, was Mary's child, and this child is God. It's amazing to think about it. God has a mother, a particular person who carried him in her womb, nursed him, cared for him, comforted and soothed him, raised him, taught him, loved him and was there for him, and pondered as a mother would pondered him, pondered who he was throughout his life, as is stated in the Gospel, and Mary kept all these things and reflected on them in her heart. Mary's love for Jesus, for God, was as unique as any mother's love for her child, but she loved him with a perfect love. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches that Mary is the one person next to God the Father who could say to the Divine Son, you are my son. And according to St. Bernard, and I find this kind of funny when you think about it, reflecting on the gospel we heard from this past weekend on the Feast of the Holy Family when Mary and Joseph found Jesus in the temple, our Lord, our, our Lady, calls God Almighty, the Lord, of the angels and the saints, the Lord of all that is, her son. 
when she asks in all simplicity, but perhaps with a little bit of frustration, son, why have you treated us so? What human being, what angel or saint, would dare to say such a thing to God? But Mary, fully aware of her motherhood, does not hesitate to call the Omnipotent One, the Lord of heaven and earth, her Son. And God is not offended for being scolded, for being called what he wanted to be. He truly is the Son of Mary. From their place in heaven, the angels and the saints contemplate in awe the supreme glory of Mary. They know full well that this dignity derives from the fact that she was and continues to be for all eternity the Mater Creatoris, Mater Salvatoris, Mother of our God, Mother of our Savior. As Mother of God, through her Son, the Blessed Virgin Mary, has a bond of consanguinity, which, as Dominican Father Gary Gou Lagrange says, thereby confers upon her earthly power in dominion over Jesus. Jesus himself is bound to Mary by the same duties of justice which all children have to their parents. And finally, as we venerate Mary, the mother of God, we simultaneously claim her as our own mother. How awesome is that? As blessed Alonzo de Orozco reflected in his commentary on the seven words of the Blessed Virgin Mary, this is one of God's greatest mercies apart from creating and redeeming us, namely, to choose to have a mother who became our mother as well. Today, we turn to Mary with thoughts filled with joy and praise and with a holy pride as we are reminded of our relationship to our Blessed Mother. Our Lady looks upon each of us with a perfect mother's love, with maternal care, and she deals with us in a motherly manner. She sees Jesus, her Son, in each Christian. And all who have the dignity to bear that name, Christian, the name and loving presence of Jesus Christ in the world. She looks upon each Christian as her own child. As co-redeemer, she urgently desires that we become fully united to the divine life of her son. She will always be ready to lend us a hand in whatever difficulties and temptations may befall us. She is our great ally, and she is always eager to accompany us on our journey through life and to pour forth grace upon grace whenever we seek her intercession. As we begin the new year, let us take advantage of the, this occasion to make a firm resolution to grow daily in our recourse to Mary, the Mother of God, and our Blessed Mother. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the church reflected in Mary, that we may faithfully bring forth Jesus Christ in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For all peoples under Mary's care, that in the coming year they may know peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For the sick, the poor, the persecuted, and the abandoned, that they may be consoled by our mother's powerful protection, and for all the sick and suffering in our own parish community, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear for all families celebrating a new year, that they may share the happiness of the family of Nazareth, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear and for all the, faithfully, all the faithfully departed, pray also for those who will die today, those without someone to pray for them, that all of our loved ones who go before us may see the face of God and live in the peace of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the deceased members of the Knights of Columbus, their wives and Columbian squires, that they will enjoy eternal peace in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear for all those prayers and petitions that each of us holds in the silence of our hearts. For all those who have asked for our prayers, those whom we've promised to pray for. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hear the prayers of your people gathered to honor the most holy mother of your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand and the prayers of your in his name, for our kingdom and all his holy church. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit on them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Dominic, Blessed Michael McGivney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. For the distribution of Holy Communion, we'll start with the center aisle, beginning from the back of the church, moving forward. And once that is completed, Deacon Marty and I will go to the side aisles, then again, starting from the back and moving forward.
Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life, for we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. May God rebuke you, you, we holy pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Prayer for the canonization of Blessed Michael McGivney. God, our Father, protector of the poor and defender of the widow and orphan, you called your priest, Blessed Michael McGivney, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous service of their neighbor. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your Son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandments of charity and building up his body, which is the Church. Let the inspiration of your servant prompt us to greater confidence in your love, so that we may continue his work of caring for the needy and the outcast. We humbly ask that you glorify blessed Michael McGivney on earth, according to the design of your holy will. Through his intercession, grant the favor I now present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is number 405, The God Whom Earth and Sea and Sky. <laughs> 